Hello, welcome to my channel. Today I will be going over army experience. Now that doctrines cost army experience to research rather than just a research slot, there's a lot higher demand for every type of experience. And in this video, I'll be going over the different ways to generate the experience and which I think are best. Let's start off with Navy experience. The only real way of getting Navy experience is by training your Navy. You can get a small amount by coming up here and getting the Navy guy. And this will give you a small amount of Naval experience per day not much. This is equivalent to one doctrine every 1011 days, which if we divide by 365 is three years. It's basically nothing. As the US, you can get over one naval experience per day training your navy, but even if you're playing as tiny Romania, and Romania only starts with a fleet of four, but training that fleet will still get you 0.3 naval experience per day, which is significantly more than spending 100 political power and putting a naval guy in charge like this guy. That is over three times more experience from training your navy than assigning this guy. So the main way to get experience for your navy is to train them and just keep training them. And click this little button here, automatic split off, just to make sure you don't accidentally sink any of them. Air XP is the hardest to come by. It is the opposite of naval XP, which is the easiest to come by. So starting as the US, this is the entire starting Air Force, including carrier-based aircraft. If we start and train these, we will get 0 0.048 a day. That is approximately half an advisor. You will get very little from training your Air Force. If we skip ahead to when these guys are regulars, so now all of these are regulars. And if we look up here, we're only getting 0 0.047 per day. Previously, we were getting 0 0.048. That's because we've lost a couple planes. There's no benefit from training regulars. This is not like the army, where training regulars gives you a small bonus. I'll also note, the entire time I was waiting for this to happen, I trained the navy. Look at the difference. The best ways to get air XP are by either appointing a chief of air force, or by lend leasing your planes to another nation that is at war. This is outside of combat, of course. If you are lend leasing your planes, make sure you are lend leasing them one per month. You need a monthly lend lease to make sure that you actually get the XP from lend leasing. This also goes for guns when you're sending guns, which is one of the ways you can generate army experience, which we will go over next. For army experience, there's a couple different ways you can generate army experience. Sending attaché is one of the ways of generating army XP. Prior to No Step Back, it was the main way democracies and the Soviet Union could generate army experience. Now, it is not so good. It has been nerfed significantly because of changes made to daily army experience gain from combat. There is now a cap to 1.2 experience per day, which means you can only get 15% of that. 15% of that is 0.18 army experience per day, which is equivalent to hiring two experts here. It is not particularly good. However, if you need the war support, then it is still very good, especially as a country like the Soviets, where 10% war support will allow them to go to war economy. But in general, sending an attache is not particularly worth it. You're better off appointing a military high command because this is permanent. The attache only lasts as long as the war does, which in most cases is going to be quite short because we're talking about civil wars. You can send volunteers to ongoing wars if you have the required army size and world tension modifiers. You can lend these guns. Like I said previously, make sure you have an active lend lease because otherwise you tend to not actually get the experience from it. And lastly, you can train your army. You can either train your entire starting army or you can use the one division exploit. The one division exploit was sort of patched out of the game, but not entirely. What they did was they made it take time for the number of divisions in your army to scale down. Previously, that didn't happen. So you could just start training and you'd immediately get like 0.7 army experience a day. And as you can see right now, I'm only getting 0 0.006. That's because I haven't let enough time pass. I'm going to jump forward to September. And when we get to September, we will be getting the full army experience. And then I'll explain which countries this works for. 
So as you can see, we are now at the end of September, and in the last couple of days, we finally hit the cap of 1.3 per day. You can make this higher by increasing the size of your division. Uh, the larger the division, the more experience you get. Uh, currently, I have not done that. As time goes on over the course of the last couple of months, this has been going up slightly. It goes up by a couple every couple of days, and then as you get towards the point where it fully starts working, it'll start rapidly scaling up, which it does over the end of August into beginning of September for the US. This works based on your starting army size. So here, Canada starts with 12 to 14 divisions. For them, this would work even faster. And this goes for any small nation that starts with a small army. They get the one division exploit training very quickly. The UK gets it in approximately the same amount of time as the US does. There are only three countries this does not work for. France, because it takes them until about April of 1937 for this to start working, at which point you might as well have just come in here and done the intervention in Spain focus and then sent volunteers or lend uh, The Soviet Union, it definitely does not work for. The starting army size is over 100. They do not start getting the one division exploit army experience until September of 1937, at which point you've completely missed your window to send volunteers to Spain and the Sino-Japanese war should be kicking off. The other nation it does not make any sense to do for is Japan. Their starting army is closer to 40 divisions, but it means they do not start getting army experience until January of 1937, at which point you're already getting to the point where you need to rebuild your army to invade China. So it, it doesn't make sense for Japan. Every other case, it can make sense. Obviously, if you're going for an early war, it's going to take too much time to scale up. And then Italy and Germany, they can both send volunteers to Spain. But all of the miners, this still works for it great. Um, it even works. It works even better than, for them. As I mentioned, Hungary can get one division exploit army experience in about four months or so because their starting army is only about twelve divisions. Same with South Africa. Thank you for watching this video to the end. I hope this helps you understand all the different ways you can get army, navy, and air experience. I hope this helps you get all the experience you need to get the doctrines and your army spirits in the officer corps if you have the DLC as well as all the divisions and designs you want. I will be making another video on the officer core more specifically, as well as on combat changes. So stay tuned for those. Thank you for watching this video, and have a good day.